This is the great secret of life. You've probably been sitting there wondering, what is the secret? I'll tell you how I have come to understand it. We all work with one infinite power. We all guide ourselves by exactly the same laws. The natural laws of the universe are so precise that we don't even have any difficulty building spaceships, we can send people to the moon, and we can time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. I don't care if you're in India, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, Stockholm or London, or Toronto or Montreal or New York, we're all working with one power, one law. It's attraction. Bob Proctor, hello from Cyprus. Hello, Pamelina, how are you? Great, how are you? It's a, such a big honor to be, to be interviewing you. Um, and thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Um, I have been actually following your work since 2006, when I first saw the movie The Secret, yes. like many people. And uh, I, I think it's law of attraction now that I am interviewing you, definitely, because you have been on my list of people I wanted to meet. <laughs> so <laughs> law of attraction definitely works. Um, and here we are. And here we are. So um, uh, for more than 40 years, you have been changing the lives of millions of people around the world with your teachings uh, based on your real life experiences of how you were able to go from a high school dropout and a pile of debt to a very successful entrepreneur building a multi-million dollar business in a very few years. Uh, you have an incredible story that you share with your students. Can you give us some examples of what made you change and uh, how you have used the principles that you teach today to change your life back in the 60s? Well, I think what happened, Davina, I was losing. I just, I had never done anything of any consequence. And I was 26. I, uh, I only had a couple of months high school, no business experience at all. And I met a man that encouraged me to look at Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And he got me to look at the results I was getting. I was unhappy, I was sick, I was broke. And he said, you can change all that. You're thinking of why you can't. Start thinking of how you can. And he started to tell me what I, I could do, but I really didn't believe it. My problem was, I didn't believe in me. And I think what changed me, I believed in his belief in me. Mm -hmm. And so... He said, why don't you do exactly what I'm telling you? Until you find out that I'm lying or that I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, that made sense. So I thought, I'll do that. And I followed his direction to the letter. I thought it was crazy. I never thought it would work. But just like that, it started working. And everything started changing. And my income went from 4000 to 175 in a year. Then it went over a million. And I have been raised to believe if we're going to earn a lot of money, we've got to be really smart. I knew I wasn't very smart, but I was earning a lot of money. So then I started to think of other things that I had been raised to believe. Like I've been raised to believe if you don't go to school, you can't win. I got to school, I went to school, and I was winning. And so I thought, I'm going to find out why I changed. Because a lot of people read and grow rich and they didn't change exactly yeah. and it took me nine years and I was studying with some really brilliant people anyone that had anything to do with the mind I'd go and I would study with them and it was like I was putting the pieces for a puzzle together and after nine years I put it together and I I learned how the mind functions I learned how we're programmed we're literally programmed genetically and then we're programmed environmentally. And most people never break out of that programming. 
School teaches us to gather information, but it doesn't show us how to use that, that information. So there's one part of our mind that's gathering information all the time, but there's another part of our mind that controls our behavior and our results. And when I started to understand it, all I wanted to do was teach it. And I got back about 45 years, something like that. And I've never stopped teaching. And, of course, I work all over the world with it. And I'm looking forward to coming to Cyprus. I have never been to Cyprus. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you. And, and in Cyprus, you're actually sharing the stage with one of your students, Nick Halleck, who told me he met you when he was 17. And, and he met, went on to achieve some great things with his life. So we have the mentor and the student at the same stage. <laughs> and I know that you actually went to work with your mentor, Earl Nightingale, who is considered the dean, uh, the dean of personal development in the USA and uh, all over the world, uh, uh, where you rose to the position of vice, vice president of sales of the Nightingale Conan Corporation before you started your own seminars company. So I want That's to ask right. you, what was the biggest impact that your mentor, Earl Nightingale, had on your life? It was a number of different things, Pavlina. It wasn't any one thing. Mm -hmm. I think it was worked with him for five years and, and I not only worked with him, I worked with his partner Lloyd Conant who was a brilliant man. Lloyd Conant was more of the businessman, Earl was the visionary. Mm -hmm. And I worked with them so I got an opportunity to watch them work and watch how they lived and I think they taught me how to study more mm -hmm. effectively. Mm -hmm. And like Earl taught me to take a paragraph out of a book and really study the paragraph. He said, try and understand where the author's mind was at when they wrote it. And what he was teaching me to do is get on the frequency that the author was on in the thinking. Mm -hmm. And I just learned so much from them. There was no one thing. It was a, a series. It was like a process that I was learning. And I think the biggest thing I learned is that what we're teaching works for everyone. There are no exceptions. Mm -hmm. I've gone into prisons, I've gone into schools, I've gone into corporations, uh, all over the world. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter where you go, people are essentially the same. Mm -hmm. Our culture is different, but culture is nothing but group habit. Culture is paradigm. And when you get past the culture, people are essentially the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, what, uh, is a brilliant guy. I'm looking forward to seeing Nick again. And, and um, thank you for accepting his invitation to come to Cyprus. <laughs> um, it will be a great event for sure. Uh, you said you, it doesn't matter uh, who you are, the information works on everyone. But uh, many people go to seminars, they read books, um, they take courses to improve their life. And, uh, but they walk away with the information and they never put it to use. Uh, to change uh, their life experience. Others, on the other hand, they take the information, they go on and apply it like you, and create something amazing with their life. So what, what is it that separates people who actually take action on their goals and dreams and uh, become high achievers with the ones that do nothing? With the info they, they have the information, but they do nothing, and they remain miserable and unhappy with their life. Well, Pavlina, I believe that most people gather information uh, uh, through the same process they gathered in school. They think if they hear it and they can repeat it, they've got it. We've got to understand there's two parts to our mind. There's the conscious and the subconscious. It's the subconscious that controls our behavior. Mm -hmm. It's the conscious mind where the intellect is resident. So the conscious mind is understanding information, but it's not internalizing it. Mm -hmm. And we've got a paradigm, it's like a program in our biocomputer that controls our behavior. And if that paradigm isn't changed, our results don't change. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't believe too many of the programs teach you anything about paradigms. I have spent the last 40, 50 years studying one thing, how paradigms control us. And Nick understands that, mm -hmm. so he used it. Uh, I understand it, I use it, and I taught it to a lot of people. And anyone that comes to the meeting 
in Cyprus and really pays attention, I'm going to show them how the one part of the mind works, how the other part works, and what you have to do if you're going to change. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it, the results don't change. When you do it, bang, like that, the results change. Well, looking forward to, to this information. Uh, it can help a, a lot of people, I know, and a lot of people are looking forward to it. Uh, you're 78 years old, young, I'm sorry, 78 years young, <laughs> if I'm correct, and uh, you keep uh, traveling the world and teaching people, while you could easily retire on an exotic location and enjoy all the wealth you have built. Uh, so uh, my question is, uh, what, what uh, keeps you motivated, uh, what keeps you going, and uh, what is your secret for staying so young and vibrant and energetic? <laughs> well, the thing that keeps me going is I love what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I stay young because I don't hang around old people. <laughs> uh, if you hang around old people, you're going to become old. The mind doesn't know anything about age. Your subconscious mind knows nothing about time or space. And so I'm hanging around young people all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I operate like they do. I don't think of myself as being old. I... Um, I'm very excited about what I'm doing. I'm enthusiastic about what I'm doing. See, all the energy in the universe is evenly present in all places at the same time. We don't get energy. We release energy. And the triggering mechanism to release energy is desire. When you've got a strong desire to do something, you will always have the energy to do it. But age has got nothing to do with it. Emerson said, do the thing, and you'll get the energy to do the thing. He's right. Excellent, thank you. Uh, uh, most people in my country and all over the world right now, they're affected by the financial crisis and they're in a state of fear and worry constantly about their future and about their finances. What is your advice to people who are going through these financial challenges right now? Well, first of all, if you're living in fear of something, it's going to happen just like it's going to get dark tonight. Mm -hmm. If you go into the Bible, the great sufferer Job said, Lo, the thing I fear has come to visit upon me. Fear is emotionalizing negative thinking. And if that's the vibration you're in, that's what you're going to attract. I don't pay attention to what's going on in the world. I pay attention to what's going on between my ears. Um, we can create our own economy. We don't have to get involved in the economy of the world. In the worst economy in all of history, there were people earning millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Not everybody participates in the world's economy. We have the ability to choose. We're God's highest form of creation. We uh, uh, surpass all other forms of life. And we don't use the mental faculties we've been given. We don't even understand what we're capable of doing. School doesn't teach us anything about ourselves. So the more we learn about ourselves, the more we take control over our life. I'm not having a bad economy. I'm having the best year in business I've ever had this year. But mm -hmm. I chose that. I don't choose to be involved in what's going on in the world. So we need to con learn to, to control our thoughts and our feelings. Because this is... Uh, an Absolutely. Learn about the power of our mind. And then nothing else around will affect us. Um, but uh, do, you, do you see that the world is moving in a positive direction of uh, growth and development or a, a negative direction of destruction? Because we hear about war, pollution, poverty. Um, how do you see things moving? I mean, how, how can we improve this uh, situation in, in, in the world that is happening today? Listen, Pavlina, I have been at this for 50 years. Mm -hmm. I have seen a lot of things change. Fifty years ago, you and I couldn't be talking like we are right now. You're sitting in Cyprus, I'm sitting in Toronto, I'm looking at you while I'm listening to you, you're looking at me as you're listening to me, and this is all being recorded. That is positive growth. The whole world is communicating. What we want to do is quit competing and start cooperating. Work together. Work in harmony. I think we ought to get rid of these crazy borders that we've got that said this is one group of people, this is another group, and this is better than that group. All the borders in the world are man-made. There are no borders. We're all hooked together. Everything is connected. There's no line 
of demarcation. We're hooked together like the colors of a rainbow. Our problem is ignorance. We don't understand that. So I think there's a great spiritual transition that's taking place in the world. I've seen many wonderful changes take place just in the last 50 years. But, you know, all the problems that we see, that's chaos, and out of chaos comes order. Mm -hmm. And it's a higher degree of order than that which existed prior to the chaos. So we're seeing things are getting better. We communicate much freer today than we ever have. There's no closed societies like there used to be. And we have the ability to jump on planes and fly all over the world. Like I'm leaving in a couple of weeks. I'm going to Tel Aviv and going to Cyprus and going from there to New Zealand and back to Toronto. I'll do all that and speak at all these places in a week. That would have been unheard of just a short period of time ago. So, so there's great positive change taking place in the world. If you listen to the news broadcast, it's all negative. So that's the world you're going to live in. Mm -hmm. Quit listening to that broadcast. Start reading some self-help books. Get involved in inspirational writings and readings. And get involved in helping someone else. Mm -hmm. The law says give and you'll receive. We want to willingly give and graciously receive. We're having problems with thinking just of ourselves. When we're winning, we're thinking of helping others. Thank you. I mean, you, you covered my question, and of course, uh, we, you have, we have all these tools today that people didn't have in the past, and we can use them to bring change very, very fast. Uh, we just need to, to you put our mind to it. Um, and the uh, last question, you tell people, um, tell me what you want, and I'll show you how, how to get it. Uh, many, many times when you ask people, what do you really want, they don't know what to answer. So what is the best way for a person to find out what they really want in their life and what is really going to make them happy? Well, getting what you want doesn't make you happy. Growth makes you happy. Consciousness, a raising in your level of consciousness. The problem with most people, they don't know what they want because they start at a very early age being programmed to think they can't have what they want. As a kid, we'll run, Mommy, Daddy, I want this, I want that. And they'll say, how are you going to get it? And because we don't know how to get it, we abandon the dream. And so what that carries on, and we become adults, and the same process evolves. We think of what we want, we let it go because we don't know how to get it. First of all, anyone that's accomplished anything of any consequence didn't know how to get what they want. They only knew that they were going to get it. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to do something until after you've done it. Mm -hmm. Our problem is we set goals to do what we think we can do or what we've already done. There's no inspiration in that. We've got to realize that wants come right from the center of our consciousness. Our spiritual DNA is perfect. The essence of the human being is perfect. And that perfection flows into your consciousness. Want this, want that. Go after it. Nail it. Sit down, write it down with a pen, and then make up your mind you're going to do it. Don't spend any time thinking of why you can't. The fun is not in getting it. The fun is in growing. Goals are to help us grow. Goals are to help us get. The getting is a side benefit. The growth is the real benefit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, we're, many of us, many people in Cyprus, are very looking forward to seeing you on the... 27th of October in Nicosia at Hilton Park Hotel for the Trillion Revolution event. And uh, the subject of your talk will be Create Your Own Economy, Thinking from the Inside Out. Anything last you would like to say to close this interview to the people who are coming to see you in Cyprus? Well, I would encourage anyone to come to bring a pad and bring a pen and take some notes and come with the idea that I can show you how to get what you want. I actually can. I've been doing it for a long time. There is no secret to it. You just have to learn how to change the paradigm, and I'm going to teach you that when I come to Cyprus. So if you can hear, see me now or hear my voice, make sure you're at that meeting. And don't come by yourself. Bring some friends with you, and you will be glad you did. That way, I want to thank you for taking the time to interview me. And, and I look you. forward to seeing you there in Cyprus. And thank you, thank you for this honor. Uh, have a great day there in Toronto, and see you soon. Bye bye. Very good. <laughs> bye bye. Thank bye. you.
This is the great secret of life.